Hello everybody, my name is Leo and with this video we are sharing a review of the new Blackstar St. James Amp Modeling plugin, specifically designed in order to clone what the Blackstar claims to be the lightest 50 watt full tube amps in the world. These tube amps are available in both EL34 and 6L6 flavors and as either a combo or as a head with a matching 2x12 cabinet. The plugin clones these different variants and in fact you have the EL34 amp model or the 6L6 one that you can select with these two very clear buttons. Blackstar describes the EL34 model as offering vintage clean to chimey mid-gain tones and the 6L6 model as dynamic clean to classic crunch and aggressive modern sounds. But of course we are free to experiment. I found the user interface to be very clear and easy to navigate. You have the amp control section, then the amp model selector buttons and then a section where you can select the effects to be placed before the amp, the cabinet, the effects to be placed after the cabinet and the EQ. Let's describe these sections also checking out the tones used in the demo song, starting from the comping tone. For the clean tone using the comping section of the demo song, I have used the EL34 variant of the amp in stereo. In fact, as usually, I have double tracked the comping part, pumpotting the two tracks hard left and right. I have selected the first channel of the amp, removing a little bit of bass, mid and treble, and with the gain at around 11 o'clock. With the pre-effects I have also added some light uh, chorus and compression to let the sound be even, three-dimensional and pretty wide, also thanks to the double tracking technique. In terms of post-effects I have used the ping-pong delay and the reverb trying them to be as low as possible in terms of mix volume, not to be too much intrusive and not fighting with the lead tone, but to still be hearable. In terms of cabinets I have selected the 2x2 with a Royer 1 to 1 and the Artist 15 with a Neumann 67. Finally I have removed the bass frequency below 80 Hz and the highs above 10 kHz. Actually also for the lead tone I had to remove some highs. We'll discuss this argument even more in my two cents section of this video. Let's now hear the resulting tone. For the lead tone I have used the 6L6 version of the amp with the channel 2 selected and again at around 2 o'clock, with also the master volume rising up a little bit. This setting provides me with the nicely distorted tone and pretty reactive to my touch. No effect selected in the pre-section, where in the post I have the same effects of the comping part. I mean a ping pong delay and a reverb. The amount of ping pong delay is much more than in the comping part, where the reverb is much more reduced, still compared to the comping part. As always, I prefer the comping part to have more reverb and the lead uh, tone to have more delay, that somehow let it cut it more through the mix. Also for the lead tone I have removed the low frequency and the high ones. This is the result, let's hear it.
So now that we have described the plugin and heard it in action, let's jump to the conclusions. Final considerations here, and please notice that these are gonna be my personal opinions for my specific use case, and of course you may not agree with me, and this is totally fine. First of all, what I think really shines in this plugin are the effects. They seem to be designed for my specific use case. In fact, as you know, I love ping pong delays and plate reverbs that are both available in this plugin and both sound great and let you create nice lead and comping tones. The amp tone is very convincing and well done, and it can cover a pretty wide variety of genres, even if it is focused only on Black Star amps. The only cons I would mention about the tone is that I found myself removing the high frequency over 10 kHz, as explained in the description part of this video. I did it in order to remove a little bit of harshness in the high frequency spectrum. Maybe it's just an impression, but I found this simulation to be a little bit too heavy in the high frequency spectrum, always obliging me to remove some heights with the EQ. Overall, the tone obtained is nice and enjoyable. Nonetheless, I don't think it adds too much to the palette of tones I already have at my disposal, for instance, with my Neural DSP Tone King Imperial, or my DB Quadro plugins, or my Mercurial Audio ones. In terms of negatives, I would mention the lack of MIDI control and the lack of support for third party impulse responses. Furthermore, despite the cab section being very nice, I found kind of annoying that it is not clear which type of cabinet I'm using. I mean, is it a Vintage 30? Is it a Greenback? Each cab clearly reports which type of Black Star cab it is, but well, I don't know all the Black Star cabinet's behaviors, and I would have preferred a clear reference to the type of speaker used. I think this unclearness is pretty annoying. One final note here. I found pretty strange that Black Star has modeled, first of all, their more portable amps. I mean, you have a very light and portable amp and you model it with a kind of even more portable solution in a plugin format. It would have made more sense, at least in my opinion, to start mimicking their heavy amps, which are more difficult to carry around, and therefore a portable solution in a plugin format would have been really appreciated. So, that's all for today's video, I hope you have enjoyed and please let me know your precious and valuable opinions in the comment section below. See you soon, bye bye!